Sell YouTube. I've got a fun one for you today. This video is all about some of the most common mistakes that French people make when they're speaking English. So if you're a Frenchie watching, I just want you to know I don't care if you make these mistakes. It adds to the charm, like it's not a big deal. But it's just, I've noticed these things that are really common in every French person that's speaking English. And I feel like if you just made tiny little adjustments or tiny little tweaks or you knew about this stuff, then you'll just sound so much more fluent and you'll speak more like a native English speaker if that's what you want to do. So I just wanted to share some of these today. And obviously, props to you if you are speaking a second, third, fourth language, like you're amazing and it's normal to make mistakes and there should be no shame around that whatsoever. But last time I did do a video on this topic, which was around 12 mistakes that French people make when they're speaking English, like really common ones, all of like, let's say the basics. And I got so much feedback about that and everyone was like, please do a part two. This video will be about even more adjustments that you can make, just things to keep in mind so that you sound even more fluent. And speaking of becoming fluent in a language, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Lingoda, which is an online language learning school that I have used personally to learn French and I'm still using to keep on top of my French, but you can also use it to learn German, Spanish, English and business English. The classes are really 24 seven. You have complete flexibility. You can book in whenever you want, wherever you want with native professors and students coming in from all around the world. And it couldn't be easier. You book in online on the website and basically they've got an entire structured learning pathway for you, which has been designed in accordance with the CEFR language learning framework of reference at every level, whether you're A1, uh, the beginner level, all the way to C2, which is the most advanced. So you're ticking off all of the skills and competencies you need. And at the end of your pathway, you can actually earn the CEFR recognized certificate for your level. So you choose your class, you book in, and you can actually download the material in advance. And you'll definitely never get bored because there's actually over a thousand different classes that you can take. So I'm using Lingoda to keep on top of my French from New Zealand and I'm using the group classes. And what's cool about the group classes is that the average class size is three people, which is nothing, and with an absolute maximum of five. So you always get that chance to speak, which is also really cool because that's a big difference between like mobile apps and stuff that you use to learn a language. Yeah, maybe you can learn the grammar, but the confidence in speaking, which is the hardest part, you don't really get to practice, whereas you do with Lingoda. And in terms of actually having language classes with real professors and real people, it works out to be incredibly cheap compared to traditional language learning schools because the prices actually start at from just eight euros per group class. And if you're interested in taking business English, it's a really good time to do it because Lingoda have just refreshed entirely the business English course so that it's more flexible and more affordable. So it's all about being able to speak better English in business relevant situations and it starts at just 79 euros per month. But what's even cooler is that you can actually try three group classes of business English for free and all of the other languages as well. So I just want to quickly tell you how to do that. If you click my link below and you sign up to the platform and you fill in your details, they ask you a few questions around obviously which language you'd like to learn, um, the intensity, how committed you want to be and that kind of thing. And it kind of generates the ideal package for you, which you can then adjust depending on your preferences. What you'll see is that it will give you two options to get started. So option one is that you have a seven day free trial where you can have three group classes of your selected language, which you can use within a seven day period. If you're pretty sure that you would learn better one-to-one -one and you wanna go private and you continue with the seven day free trial, you'll get one free private class to try out. Now option two, if you're already ready to commit and you know that you wanna sign up for a month or maybe even more, you can use my code ROSIE4 and you'll get 25 euros or equivalent off your first month. Just one thing is that if you do the seven day free trial and you decide to continue, you can't use my discount code. So it's one or the other. So either you do the seven day trial and then continue, or you sign up directly and you get my discount code ROSIE4 for 25 euros off your first month. If you wanna know more about Lingoda, you can obviously check out the website or the Instagram at Lingoda underscore official to hear more about some student success stories and that kind of thing. Cool, so enjoy guys. And with that said and done, let's jump into the video. My first point is all around plurals. So I know this is really tough when something's a plural in your native language and then not in the language you're speaking, but there are some really, really common English words that French people add an S to where there doesn't need to be an S and they come up all the time. And I actually mentioned this in my original video but there's one that I forgot and I really want to talk about it so common words that aren't a plural transport not transports 
information you never say informations it's never ever a plural feedbacks is another big one thank you for your feedbacks those are really interesting feedbacks nope feedback never ever takes an s it's not a plural but the one i forgot to mention last time was advices advice to give someone advice thank you for your advice he gave me plenty of advice it never ever has an s just a bonus one here that's really cute is here so here is never a plural either even though it's super cute if you hear a french person saying oh you've got really beautiful hairs or oh my hairs are dirty i need to wash them <laughs> it's really cute like talking about this collective of all these hairs the only time it would take an s is if you were like oh the hairs on her leg or the hairs on her arm kind of thing the next point is something that i would hear all the time and it's like we went to town with rosie for example so it's like Saying that you went and did something with someone and starting the sentence with we. We went shopping with Rosie. We went to town with Rosie. So we don't do that in English. By saying with someone, you already give the information that there was someone else or several people. So you would say, I went to town with Tina. I went shopping with Sarah. I went to the movies with James and Emily. Quite related to something I also hear, which is French people often saying we are three or we are five uh, instead of saying there are five of us or there are three of us. There are going to be 20 of us. The next point definitely had me confused for a little bit when I came to France. Education is not the same as upbringing. French people often say that they educate their children or their children are, w are well educated. And as an English speaker, education very much refers to schools, diplomas, formal education. So if you say, oh, they're well educated, we think, oh, they went to a good school. But what you're trying to say is that they've been raised well, they've been brought up well, they had a good upbringing. Um, and it often also means that they've been disciplined well. <laughs> so when you say that a, a, a child is a bien éduqué, it means, you know, they've, <laughs> they've, they've learnt the rules and they've been brought up well, you know. Say, I wasn't educated that way, you can say, I wasn't brought up that way. The next one may be a little bit trickier for me to explain exactly why it is this way. Just say a colleague came up to your desk and was chatting to you for a few seconds and was like, oh, I let you work. So they use the word let instead of leave. So what you want to say, when you're, when you're moving away from people, you're saying, I'll leave you to work or I'll, I'll leave you to do that. Whereas let means allow, like the parents won't let him buy a phone or he won't let me do that. The next one I may have heard quite a lot because I work in HR and we often talk about finding purpose and meaning in your work. And in French, I guess you'd say something like une carrière qui a du sens, sens. And sens has the same meaning that you're trying to get to. But what I hear it often translated to, no surprise, is sense, the English word sense. When you say, um, I want to do work with sense, or the sense of the project is, what you're really trying to say is the purpose. Another one which is an absolute classic is asking your friend to remember me. Like, remember me to take out the chicken for dinner, or, or remember me closer to the time about his birthday. What you're trying to say is remind me, like, rappelle moi. And remember is more like ce souvenir. And so when you say remember me, it's almost like you've died and your ghost is saying, remember me. <laughs> Next one is that a business that's trying to make a profit is called a company, not a society. I know that you're drawing the links with société, but it's, it's not the same. So a society is the word for a collection of people, like, like a community. The next one's pretty English 101, but it's around asking about the date and giving the date. To French people, just because it's a direct translation of how they ask and how they say it, um, they will ask you like, what date are we or we are what date? And if you ask them, they might say something like, we are the 12 or we are the 10. And I guess the English native way would just be more so what's the date today what is the date today and then replying you say it's the 12th or we are on the 12th but you would never say we are the 12th and just a bonus when you're saying your age a classic one is to say i have 30 instead of i am 30 so just keep it in mind that it's i am for the for the age the next one is everywhere in the workplace environment and it's very confusing at first but saying male to mean an email 
like so send me a mail we'll send a mail about that and i would always wonder to myself where's the e gone like <laughs> and because mail for us is obviously mail that if we receive mail we receive something via the postal service you know physical mail in an envelope so if it's sent electronically it's an email <laughs> it obviously comes from the french word from email which is mail also related to the workplaces when french people say in english oh i'm going to look at my planning so planning in english is a verb it's something that we do like i'm planning a birthday party i'm planning a trip to italy i wish when you're looking at kind of like a forecast of time and you're looking at where things are going to fit in over time i'm also going to be referring to a schedule like a project schedule or a timetable if you're also just looking at what you're what you've got on for the week for example you'd mostly say um let me just check that out in my calendar or let me have a look at my agenda the next one just for fun because i have heard it Someone who is working in the legal profession is a lawyer, not an avocat or an avocado. <laughs> I have actually heard that. The next one is something that's just a direct translation, so it's no surprise really. But it's uh, French people often say, oh, for me, it's good. Instead of find me, suits me, sounds good to me, they say, for me, it's good. And it's just a direct translation of pour moi c'est bon you know so it makes sense but it just doesn't sound very native english speaker so yeah yep suits me fine for me sounds good to me that would sound much more fluent the next point is that a comedian is someone who stands on stage and makes people laugh it's not an actor or an actress the next one came up for me quite often when i was like interviewing people and stuff like that but saying that you are experimented instead of experienced and because yeah, obviously in French you say expérimenté, but it's experienced in English. And last one, if you want to order a steak saignant, so a steak that hasn't been cooked very much at all, it's not called a bloody steak. You'd say either that you'd like your steak rare, which has been just browned, uh, you know, either side, or it's basically raw and you would ask for it blue. So there you guys go. I hope that you found this video useful um, and interesting and a nice compliment to the first video I did ages ago now if you can think of some other classic mistakes let me know down below i always love hearing about this kind of stuff and if you are learning or want to learn a second third fourth language at the moment don't forget to click my link down below for lingoda you've got the two options you can either do the seven day trial and get three free group classes or one private session or you can just jump straight in and sign up to your bundle and get the 25 euros off using my code rosie4 that's it for this time guys i'll see you next video wednesday Aviento!